Wow, that is so happy. I appreciate being here with you on uh, Wild Ute University on the weekend for us. And uh, we're coming to you with some awesome content about University of North Carolina and mm. their possible move to the Big Ten. I want to introduce myself. I'm Nathan Bomber Brown. And with me is Wild Utes University, the Dean of Admissions. And that would be the Wild Ute. How are you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. Yeah, the Dean of Wild Ute University. That's awesome. Yeah. And today's topic is super exciting, y'all. We're digging into the details here on UNC. North Carolina and the Tar Heels, and if they fit into the Big Ten Conference, we've heard a ton, a ton about UNC possibly moving over to the SEC, but not a lot about the Big Ten. What we're the objective today is just to see if they're a fit. They're, are they a fit for the Big Ten? Is this a school the Big Ten should pursue? And I think that after this, it's going to be pretty telling for everybody out there. It's really important for everybody to understand that when we're putting this information out there, this is just for your edification. We don't get anything out of it necessarily, but it, it's really important that we try to answer as many questions as we can as why these schools go to these different conferences. And North mm -hmm. Carolina is sitting at a pivot point. They have a lot of people asking about them uh, and uh, you know, hopefully they make a decision. They decide to go to one of the other two big conferences and that would be the SEC or the big 10. So this is the big 10 version of that. And, uh, Let's kind of see how it goes. You ready to go, You Let's do it. Let's jump in. All right. Go ahead. All righty. So to start out with, as you've seen with prior videos, if you watched the Wild Newton University, there's a method to the madness here. And this is it's a seven-point method based on the history, perception, recruiting, financials, viewership, academics, and market that we're all looking at. We're measuring North Carolina to the Big Ten from 1 to 18. Right now, we're stack ranking those and we're seeing if North Carolina is uh, at the median point above or below the median to see how they would shake out in the current iteration of the Big Ten Conference. And that's really what we're doing here. So let's jump into it. So the first area that we're going to look at is history. And history is what we're talking about here. This is the blue blood rankings for football. This is football only. This does not include basketball, which is a huge component with the University of North Carolina that we'll get into here. But for football, the Big Ten Conference, that's a major focus when we're looking at a brand of a school to bring into the Big Ten. Uh, how does UNC football compared to the rest of the Big Ten and the blue blood rankings the uh, Winsipedia composite rankings for um, for all the Big Ten schools kind of shakes it out here. If you look to the right side and you look to that beautiful baby blue color right there <laughs> where UNC stacks up and they're sitting here in the blue blood rankings at 14 of 19 schools with that bar in the middle that ten, at the 10 point where Iowa is, you can see a bar extending out. That is the median point. And as far as football, History, UNC is actually below the median. What do you think about that, Bomber? Well, I mean, I, I'm not shocked, one. Uh, they're a basketball power. I mean, Blue Blood, they're, they're one or two in the basketball power ranking. So I, I think that a lot of this has to go with, um, besides football, it, it, there's other components that make it more popular. I, I wouldn't worry about them being in the Big Ten. I think they would be a fine addition. They definitely aren't worse than any of the schools that are in that 10 or below. So, and every once in a while, they'll have a good year. Um, I'm a little surprised they've only spent one week in all of college football history one week at number one that that isn't a good number so that's wild that point, yeah that does surprise me like no national championships no heisman winners so there's not a lot of like historical um huge successes right at north carolina i mean they might have been to a, a good bowl game here or there but really it's it's a decent p5 a4 program but when you're looking right. at how prestigious the big 10 is it's it's a really below median point for football so that's the that's area one we're going to look at let's jump forward now to the perception and when we're talking about perception we're talking about recruiting perception this is based on the survey that 24 7 took last year in 2023 right before the start of the football season on what they thought of about brands, how valuable were brands, and they uh, they did a stack ranking of the top 25 brands in the nation. 
And this is the stack rank of the Big Ten that were included on that list from recruits. Wow. And yeah, right. Like UNC surprisingly is sitting at number four, you know, yeah. nine Big Ten teams that were actually in that top 25 from recruits. So uh, when you're talking about like, hey, what do high school kids think of UNC? It still has swag, still has that swagger factor and stuff that UNC has always kind of had. And it's probably largely due to its basketball program. But still, like you're you're sitting right there next to Penn State and Michigan as far as. Yeah, that's shocking to me. I cannot believe that. So that, that's feedback from players when they get a recruiting visit. Somebody asks them about North Carolina. They they hold them in pretty high regard then. No doubt about it. That's exactly wow. what it means. Um, and, and so out there with the, the younger kids, at least like, you know, elite athletes, UNC has a very good brand. Wow. That's what that's pointing to. And so, yeah, it, it's a little bit surprising. And like just a disclaimer. So if if the school, maybe your school is not showing on this, your Big Ten school, uh, the way that we're approaching this is if your school wasn't listed in the top 25, we're just going to give you 10 points in the model that we're using here. So you can see that bottom bar there. The remaining figure has a 10 next to it. And we're just saying that, um, you know, you weren't ranked in the top 25 and everybody has a 10 um, for the modeling purposes. But yeah, UNC did pretty good here. Yeah, that's awesome. Let's move on here. So let's, let's look at recruiting here. And recruiting is um, this, we've changed the methodology based on really recent information, Bomber. So um, on, in past videos, we looked at the 2023 talent composite, like the entire talent uh, recruiting ranking for an entire squad, a whole team. Um, but since the transport portal hit during the season and after this last season, uh, we wanted to include more of a dynamic current look. So the recruiting class for 2024 just closed a few days ago. And so this valuation here in the stack ranked on the right side actually includes some weighting towards the most recent recruiting class right so uh, this actually factors in like how successful what 2024 recruiting class was and it combines the 2023 composite ranking in addition to that so it's kind of a mix of the both um and it stacks all these 19 teams there's some blends unc showing up right now in that sixth spot they're showing up in nebraska because they scored out the exact same that's what that means. That like, is just, another crazy number. So what does that mean? You're getting a high recruiting uh, look looks by players. You're actually recruiting high, uh, highly rated players. Why aren't they winning more? I mean, is this a Mac Brown problem? I mean, right? Yeah. What is I, going I, I thought, on? I mean, Mac Brown won a championship at Texas. You would think if anybody could get him over the line, it'd be him. But I mean, they're better. I mean, they're tied with Nebraska, but they're better in Washington, Wisconsin, UCLA, Michigan. That is, and I was sitting there. I, again, I'm just really, really surprised. That's crazy. It, it is surprising to see. This is football, too. We're not including right. any basketball metrics right now. This right, is football right. recruiting. And so, in the, this is what, what this is saying is that UNC is showing out that this is six best, most talented roster based on recruiting rankings in the Big Ten at the moment. Wow with it being in the ACC, which is nuts. Cause like, yeah, you go back to like, why aren't they winning more games? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's something with the coaching possibly at UNC, <laughs> yeah, but they've got I talent. Uh, yeah, one, I don't know. Full disclaimer though, UCLA took a huge step back um, compared to like the 2023 composite rankings. When you're factoring in the 2024 recruiting class, UCLA right. was one of the worst in the big 10. Really? So they took a huge step back. This is even before the impacts of Chip Kelly leaving. Too. Right. So you'd imagine right. a lot of players are going to be jumping off ship. That that UCLA like talent, uh, like the talent of that roster is going to really take even probably a bigger step back here in the coming weeks. So I mean UCLA right now is showing as a median average level Big Ten talent team, but probably Jeez. soon will uh, be below. <laughs> Low median. Uh, uh, it couldn't, ha couldn't happen to a better team. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> all right, let's move on here. Okay, let's look at the financials here. So um, how we view financials is uh, we look at three different metrics based on the NCAA revenue expense reports of each one of these schools. Uh, Sportico actually compiles the NCAA expense reports from athletic departments and, and puts together really easily digestible ways to look at that information. And so using Sportico information, 
and the NCAA revenue expense reports, we're getting to these figures, y'all. And I, this is as of uh, 6 of 2022. A lot of schools have started reporting and have reported the 6 of 2023 financial figures from their athletic departments, but not all the Big Ten schools. So oh. in future videos, that 6 of 2022 will be 6 of 2023 when that gets updated for everyone. For example, Ohio State hasn't yet reported their 2023 financials, okay. so we can't we can't really compare that information. So this is going back to 6 of 2022, and it's showing, as far as brand value, what are the three, three components that are important components to consider? Ticket sales, licensing and ads, and then miscellaneous revenues that might be jumbled together know possibly more advertising type of revenues and stuff just a like a big bucket there that you can see where these schools kind of stack up when you total all those together um, the median point here is where the iowa hawkeyes are and you can see the blue bar in the middle that's the median and the x marks the spots where our tar heels are and so even in the acc they're scoring a little above the median uh, one disclaimer too Northwestern nor USC are on this list because they're private schools. We don't have access to that information. So there's only right. 17 schools showing up right here. Again, a great showing. I, I think yeah. if you're in the middle of the pack in the Big Ten, you're doing well. I don't care about it. I, that is that is really remarkable. I, I, I know that the SEC is a, a possibility for them. And, and when we do a Wild Duke University on the SEC, this will be interesting to see how they shape up in that conference, but wow, that's, uh, yeah, these are good numbers for North Carolina. It's a good number so far. Right. And like, what could this be though? Like, okay. So this is ACC based licensing and ad revenue and also right. ticket sales. Like ticket sales are going right. to take a major lift when you get in the big 10 conference yeah, and right, even right. the sec. So right. like, what could the heels be in the future? And it's, a lot more than what they're at now and they're actually Absolutely. above median so man like there's some serious growth potential there i think for the tar heels completely agree um okay let's move on here all right here's where it gets a little ugly okay <laughs> <laughs> so you you and see was scoring out really well up to this point and uh okay we're looking at all 19 schools this is based on nielsen ratings as uh, recorded by sports media watch does not include the ACC AC network, Pac-12 network, or Peacock games. Includes the Big Ten network games, though. But this is your average TV viewership per game Yikes. Of, over a three-year period from 21 to 2023. That is not good. <laughs> less, it, it shakes out. It's less, they actually have a less than a million viewers per game. Are they less than average. SMU? No. That's okay. Is much, much lower. Okay. All right. And, and we're talking about football, everybody. We're talking about football. And I've got to throw a massive disclaimer out here, too. So when you're looking at this graph, UNC not scoring well. People don't watch UNC football much, clearly. Jeez. Um, despite the good, you know, talent on the roster and everything else, they're just not a big football viewership draw. However, what is not on this list is how significant the basketball viewership is for unc i'm right. shocked on how good the basketball viewership is yeah so unc has slightly less than 1 million viewers per game in football and like and if you think about that that's saying that every week of the season unc is getting less than a million viewers per game or around a million viewers per game in, wow. in the football season okay you can think of it that way like a weekly viewership in football is a little less than a million Looking at just the basketball season for this season, this year, UNC is scoring on a weekly basis significantly higher than its football program. Like the basketball program itself is scoring per week on viewership, is scoring anywhere from like a million to a million five viewers per week in basketball on the seasons much longer than football. Right. Like there is. UNC basketball is the, as far as viewership, is like the Ohio State of basketball. Oh, okay. So I want, I'll put it that way. UNC is one of the best drivers, probably the best driver in basketball ratings out there. Okay. Duke's, Duke's really good. Kentucky's really good. Kansas is really good too. So when you see this graph, it looks ugly. But if you dig a little bit deeper and look at basketball viewership, which is abnormal, because everybody else is kind of washing out low basketball viewership. 
UNC actually has, when you do a combined basis, much, much better viewership when you're stacking it up than just what it looks like right here. You're going to see that at the very end of this analysis too when we when we jump into that but just give that disclaimer there because it's a little bit misleading just looking at football viewership for unc given the uniqueness of the basketball program how how many um seats are in the indoor basketball arena do you happen to know i don't know for unc because um, uh it, it, it say it's twelve thousand, and it might be 15 it might be nine i don't know but uh it that is a, you know, I mean, that's great that they have a lot of people watching it, but unfortunately, football, uh, the stadium holds 50, 60, you know, 70,000 people. You can't, mm -hmm. that's seven or eight football, ba basketball games. It just doesn't, one game in football, it, you know, would overpass basketball probably five or six times. For so, sure. and For that, sure. that's the inequality that, yeah, I, I don't know how you can track that. And from like an advertiser standpoint too, like a football game is like three and a half hours. Could even right. approach four hours long. Yeah. And a basketball game is like around two hours. Yeah. And so from like if you're trying to, you know, advertise on that game, like you're only getting half the benefit really from um, you know, from a basketball game and a football game because right. of the length of the game, depending on on how you work it out with like your partner. So there's a lot of different dynamics involved there. Basketball is not worth as much as football, approximately 20 to 25% of football. Okay. Um, but it's still like for unique situations like North Carolina, you absolutely have to like understand that their viewership is so strong in basketball. That is a swing factor okay. for this school and not, not your normal school in the big 10 or elsewhere, but for this school. All right. All right, let's jump over here. Okay, let's look at the academics and the academic profile for uh, for UNC here. So the approach here for academics, it's a, a blend of taking the U.S. News, uh, best academic school rankings, the best academic schools from Forbes, and also NSF data. That's the National Science Foundation. That's uh, took a three-year spending, um, research spending summation so add a three years of the most research of the nsf research data together to see how strong unc was compared to other big 10 schools so using us news forbes and the nsf data blended all those things together to kind of create a academic power ranking here that's what we did um so unc clearly scores really well yeah i would even say compared to the big 10 and the big 10 i was talking about like really really strong schools, massive research institutions, and still UNC's shaking out at number five. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I still, it's a nice club to be in if you can get in the door, for sure. Yeah, like, I think that's remarkable. Yeah. It's nuts, too, how like Washington, Washington academically and like research-wise is such a powerhouse that is little talked about. Look at that, like Washington shaking out like that third place with North, Northwestern. Right. Right. I mean, seriously, Washington's a strong school, but UNC right there between Washington, Northwestern, and USC—that's excellent. And that who has the just, bigger who has the bigger endowment? Endowment, I between Washington and UNC, we have to research that one. Because uh, I I thought Washington had the had he, weren't they higher than UCLA? Perhaps, yeah. As far as I, I thought, their endowment was like twelve billion dollars or something when we did the when we did that evaluation stuff in the summer so yeah i know that stanford has a massive endowment yeah like, they were right behind about, them i think all these schools have big endowments and everything yeah. and like the endowment part of it wasn't included in kind of the academic power ranking oh sure yeah it doesn't um, matter here. Yeah. but yeah i mean you're, you're talking about a strong strong academic school and elite academic school and dang these big 10 universities are seriously elite i mean nebraska's i don't know oregon Kind of like a you know, step down and everything from everybody else, but I mean, strong, strong schools. Awesome. All right, let's let's move on. So, okay, here let's dig into the UNC market here. So you can see geographically where UNC is showing up. That looks pretty dang close, huh? Yeah. So these other historical, traditional Big Ten schools, as far as travel partners go, and as far as like just geographic travel. Yes. It's like right there, man. It's pretty. Yep. It's a pretty easy fit to see right there, you know, and like it's a new market. You're adding that uh, Raleigh Durham market and the Asheville market too in North Carolina. Um, so brand new, uh, that's, that would be a very desirable market to go after. 
to the Absolutely. big 10 strategically. And uh, you can see just based on the market size and in the market sizes and in the, the stack ranking to the left, these are this best on uh, Nelson data and also per sports media watch sports media watch has been kind enough to siphon out which college teams are located in what market to do like a analysis of that. And UNC, when you look at the analysis shows out in the right at the median point, right at 10, okay. as far as the market size there. And you're looking and these just, the big 10 schools have massive markets like look at a washington bomber like in seattle like unc yeah. like is right there next to washington and seattle when you combine all the markets that are adjoining markets for unc like absolutely <laughs> massive markets so it's, it's absolutely nuts you know how strong these big 10 markets are and and again it's just another metric showing usc is right unc is right there at the media point so um, yeah it's, it's looking like a lot of things are kind of aligning for the tar heels that looks awesome. All right, y'all. Here's a lot of information. Totally understand that. This is the shakeout of where UNC stack ranks based on all the different areas, the metrics in the model that we talked about, and where they shake out out of the 19 Big Ten schools. Bomber, what do you think about this when you just see it on the surface right now? I, I think that it's ideal. Uh, it, at the end of the day, it, depending on leadership, where they end up taking this school is going to be completely on their shoulders. But if they look at information like this and they can't see the upside, I, I don't know what they're looking at. Because uh, in my opinion, UNC is much more suited to be a Big Ten school than an SEC school. They may go to the SEC, but I think because of the uh, strength they put into their academics it would be a much more elite type decision to go to the big 10. yeah and like there's going to be one more uh, analysis table we'll show here in a second so one disclaimer here this includes the viewership for football right that we talked about in unc stack ranked 17 of 19 big 10 schools that's really driving their number down right here Yep. They're 17 and 19 in the viewership column. And so it's putting UNC in the ninth place right there, which is yeah. slightly above the median Big Ten team. To me, when I first saw that, I was a little surprised it wasn't higher on the surface, but then I was looking at the reasoning for it. And clearly the historical blue blood success for UNC is not great compared to the yep. Big Ten median. And also the viewership's absolutely killed. And that's the football viewership. So – I think that's unfair, though, to just look at UNC through the football viewership lens. Uh, their basketball viewership is so strong and so significant. For example, they just put like a 3.2 million rating with Duke UNC this last week, Bomber. Like that's like that's like a bowl game, like a good bowl right. game rating right. for a college basketball game. So I would posit here that UNC's viewership number – Football viewership number should be doubled, should be doubled to consider basketball value and how unique the school is with basketball value. That's exactly how I'd look at it. So the, what uh, what would you place them three or four spots higher then? So I'll show you here in the next analysis table here. If you were to double UNC's football viewership, which was a little less than a million and give right. them credit for the basketball viewership, this is how they shake out. Fifth. All of a sudden... Yeah, they're they're fifth here, and they're getting yeah. stacked ranked at the same place as where UCLA, Washington. They Absolutely. scored out the exact same, but you can see in viewer the viewership column they moved from seventeen to right. eight. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the reason for the jump here. And they jumped a couple schools like you know Oregon, Wisconsin. So I wow. think that this with the basketball adjustment for UNC, I think this is the true value of UNC right here, and that they really are like a fifth place type of Big Ten fit. And if the Big Ten, they will want UNC. Like for all the reasons that we're talking about, the Big Ten has to go after UNC as one of the top targets. I know they're going to have to fight for UNC with the SEC because the SEC doesn't have the North Carolina market too. Right. But UNC is a clear Big Ten fit in so many different ways that it's a, it's a no-brainer to go after the Tar Heels, especially considering how strong basketball viewership is and when you adjust up that number. It, you know, and when you see comparative analysis around the Internet, when we're talking about all these schools possibly moving from the ACC to either the SEC or the Big Ten, uh, it, 
a lot of this, a lot of those analysis don't go this deep, right? They're no. not putting together these long formulas, trying to come up with a way to get the most fair ranking of each individual school. And that's what we're doing here. I, I think this is fantastic work, you. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. And like, I think it's pretty illuminating just to see kind of where it really shakes out for these schools. Cause we can talk about like a factor here and a factor there, but it never really makes sense until you put it on paper and show right. like in a model to say, Hey, look, this is really how it, it shows. And UNC clearly is a fit for the big 10 in a lot of ways, like academically a perfect fit, right? Like in their AAU, that's not even factored into the model folks, but like AAU is something that the big 10 oh, likes. Right. It's not a requirement. For yeah. the Big Ten, so we don't include them in the model here, but it's just another data point to show, hey, like this is a school that the Big Ten is going to want to pursue if it can get them. So just watch out for that. I mean, the Big Ten is probably going to be fighting with the SEC to get UNC for good reason because uh, the Tar Heels bring a lot of value. Unless North Carolina State holds on to them like grim death <laughs> and won't let them go, and then they'll be stuck in the ACC forever. Yeah, I mean, if you <laughs> NC State – yeah, piggybacks off UNC that the numbers change completely, right? Right. They don't look quite as attractive at all. And like it, it'd be hard to make the argument that they're both worth it. I yeah, can't but, imagine that's gonna happen. Yeah. They gotta yeah. let them go, in my opinion. All right. Well, this has been another edition of Wild Ute University. You see underneath our pictures here, our contacts on Twitter. Please follow us and then uh consider subscribing to the Big 12 Mafia college football mafia page on YouTube. And uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, I, I'm your host, Nathan Bomber Brown. That's the Wild Ute. And we will see you later. Peace. Go, you.